All right. Hey there. Welcome to the Total Connector Show. My name is Kevin Davani. I'm really super excited to have Randy Brito from Lodge Mesh uh, with me for the first time on my show. Uh, Randy, thank you so much for your time. How are you doing? Thank you for having me here. Sure, my pleasure. Um, listen, uh, we already, you know, had a short chat um, a while ago, and um, I told you a little bit, you know, about my the background or the uh, the reason why why I'm so excited and 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 really, uh, it's a top priority for me uh, to talk about this topic uh, because uh, you and your team at uh, I'm gonna, you know, let you introduce yourself a little bit and 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 lot your match, but I still wanna, you know, give a little bit of background for, for my for my listeners. Um I had a couple of weeks ago, you know, a great talk with uh Zio from Iran. Um he's actually pretty well known, you know, in the Bitcoin uh, scene, in the Bitcoin space. He's even been uh mentioned by the human rights um uh activist or or advocate uh uh, Gladstein is that yeah I think he's, he's uh, the human rights foundation exactly yeah and you know there have been this protest going on and you know I don't want to go into you know into uh, all these discussion with its uh, riots or protests I'm, I'm sure partially it's instigated but it doesn't matter you got the you know the oppressive sort of theocratic regime you got the sanctions and embargoes going on for decades so the people are suffering um, you know socially economically communication wise and when it comes to money you know uh transaction uh um it's 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 really um it's really headache it's 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 a it's a pain point and and i think this is what what makes me so excited is that um with uh, whatever it's called local mesh network satellite radio frequency technology i'm not the technical guy but i know uh the, you know, committed people like you guys with your team, that this is possible. It's feasible for the first time uh, in the very near future to have uh, Bitcoin transactions and communication without internet, and even as you say, even on your on your website, uh, without the grid. So, Randy, could you you know break down a little bit, introduce yourself a little bit, you know your background, uh, tell me you know something about Lodge uh, Match. What was the path to? How did you guys find together? What's the mission? And you know the, uh, just uh, you know maybe a, a brief description. Of, you know what are you guys doing in this project, in this company? Thank you so much. Thank you. Uh, myself, I started reading about Bitcoin in 2011. I founded Bitcoin Venezuela as a non-for-profit non organization uh, dedicated to educate about Bitcoin in Venezuela and Spain. And, and, a, and after uh, a few years, we started doing humanitarian aid uh, from the uh, non-for-profit. And one of the things that we started two years ago was uh, adapting and creating tools for the cases like Venezuela, right? So we, we started to think that Bitcoin to be uh, used and to to have more adoption needed some tools to be adapted, translated, uh, in, in this case, like uh, advanced or, or enhanced for these kind of situations. Like Venezuela is a very specific uh, storm situation. So it's like perfect storm situation. And it's the same case with Iran. So you have... Um, foreign exchange control, you have um, capital controls, you, you, you have a, a hyperinflation, there is um, censorship uh, on the communications and websites, there are blacklists of websites that you cannot uh, access to, there, there is persecution of people using um, the internet or any other type of communication for free speech. So this is the, the, the kind of things that we two years ago started working on in order to help Bitcoin get more adoption, but also to let people be more free on what they want to do, in this case, communicating or paying or sending Bitcoin or, or, or accessing websites that are being censored in their country or this kind of thing. So the idea of Locha Mesh started almost two years ago when in Venezuela there was a blackout, an electricity blackout that left a city for a whole week without electricity, which uh, affected the cell towers so 
the, the cell towers, um, imagine you have your cell phone and there is one week without electricity in the whole city, so you are not uh, capable of charging it. But you find a way to do it. It's like you plug into your car, you find gas or oil, um, and you make your car run until your phone is charged. And when you want to use it, the 3G, 4G mobile uh, network doesn't work because the cell tower is down. Because after three days, the cell tower also runs out of gas, of the of the electricity generator that it runs on gas. And then you find out that you are not able to communicate with anyone outside your city. So what do you do in that situation? How do you pay others so you are capable of eating? How do you pay others to get the gas to put the generator to work so your fridge in your house doesn't melt completely with all the food inside of it and everything going rot? So what, how do you pay others when you cannot access your online banking website because there is no electricity or internet at all? So that's how, uh, that's what uh, came up, we, we came up with the idea of making a uh, mesh network. So in that, what, what is a mesh network? Mesh network is a, a number of devices that connect to each other in, in a way, in a decentralized way that it is capable of finding path to deliver a message. So you're capable of communicating, but also paying, for example, with Bitcoin, because it's simply um, information that you have to send from one side to another in order to get it added to the Bitcoin blockchain and get um, the confirmation, for example. So it's not only a mesh in the way that it will be, for example, with computers or routers that are connected to the electricity and with an antenna connect to each other from one side to another, but it's also decentralized in the way that it doesn't actually need to be plugged into the grid system. So it runs on a battery, it is, it is very small, so you can carry it around, which adds some uh, safety to it. So you can carry it around because the, this mesh network uses radio um, frequencies, so uh, the, the thing with radio frequencies is that in the Iran or Venezuela situation where there is persecution of people also through uh, social media, uh, the use of mobile bandwidth uh, because those are attached to SIM cards that can be many in the middle or can be tracked down to people. So the, the radio uh, mesh nodes that we are creating are can be carried around as almost like a a hotspot that you can carry around to get connected to the mesh instead of the internet. So that gives you this, uh, that, that you can move around, you can get better signal, so you, you are not attached to your house. It is also more difficult to find you uh, because you are always uh, on, on the move. So you can, for example, get it blocked in your car and it will be an antenna moving around the city. What do you mean? Uh, can I t just interrupt? What do you mean? Like it's not so difficult? Like this is the first concern I think any f any fearful or paranoid Iranian citizen, or you know somebody living in Iran would would ask you or would you know would ask themselves uh, you know how secure or private and, and and shielded and protected is this network? Like you know like when I look at Gotenna, just I don't want to actually you know name any company, but. Uh, I saw another article today. I'm like, you know, every time I see Gotenna articles or any kind of reports, it's always like pictures of the military, like military grade style equipment, you know, communication. I'm like, really? Uh, I mean, you know, it's all about ethics or ethos of a company. And there are really few companies in this space like you guys that really have a, you know, have a, you know, mission in your heart. You know, you really want to you know, achieve something and help people. And are there any back doors? Like, can it be interfered with, scramble, uh, you know, any, like, this is the aspect I want to really go into deep, but, you know, uh, finish off what you want us to say. I'm sorry to interrupt you. Well, the, uh, yeah, the, for this company, for example, sells uh, devices specifically for these kind of things, like the, for authorities, uh, for firefighters, for military and rescue teams and all, all things. That's, mostly not for the regular user. So it's, it's in, it, it like trying to compare a satellite phone that 
almost no one has to a hotspot, which everyone can go to a hot store and buy it with it. So you can, you can buy one and connect your phone or, or have it in your car so everyone can connect to, to play with the iPads or whatever, right? So we are trying to approach, to approach more to the regular user. So we are selling like a hotspot for the Locha Mesh. So when you buy our, one of our devices, you will be able to connect up to three mobile phones, three smartphones, through or, or over Wi-Fi to it, like a hotspot or, or, or a router with a battery on it. And so this, um, the idea is that in, in part of the privacy and security is that it is completely open source. So you can look it up, you can check, out, check what the code says it does. You can even wipe out the device or build your own and you can flash this, the software that we have on GitHub on one of the devices that you own or you created yourself. You don't have to trust us on the hardware. You don't. You also. You, you either don't have to trust us on the software. You can check it out yourself. It's completely open source, so you can see what the firmware on the hardware is doing. So you can see that it's basically relaying messages, sending messages to other devices over radio, uh, sub gigahertz radio, so it reaches long distances. Um, and in the part of the privacy and anonymity, you have the open source mobile app that runs on the phone that you can download from the App Store or, or the Play Store when it's available. But you can also build yourself from GitHub. And we're, we most probably will make it available over the device itself because if you have a device or you bought the device and you don't have internet or you don't want to expose yourself by downloading the app from the app store or the play store like it has exactly that's what i was going to ask you because you know uh, i'm sure people would like be so paranoid like Ooh, oh oh and for a second i don't even know with the people like how restrictive is it like like how you know difficult is it in iran i don't even know because you know i haven't been there since 1979 uh, i don't even know you know what the situation is really like 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 you know how uh, you know how how much surveillance and you know, how, how advanced is the technology, especially, you know, the regime, the military, the police. Uh, these are the questions, you know, I, I just have like layman questions. Maybe you can go into detail, like, uh, and, and, and uh, really explain uh, what, what, what could be the risks, I mean, potentially. Well, the, we, we, we saw the example of Hong Kong, where people were downloading an app in order to put tags on the map so you can avoid going to the streets. Uh, but the, the people don't, who download this app were asked by the Chinese government directly to Apple to uh, compromise those people who have downloaded the app. So if, if you don't want to expose yourself through the Google Play Store or the Apple App Store, you will be able to compile the app yourself directly from GitHub or one of our repos. Or, but we, we also are thinking about a way how to eat that if you, for example, buy the device for now, the app will be bundled inside the device itself. So you can download it for, from it directly over, the, over Wi-Fi and you can uh, get it installed on your phone without ever getting connected to the internet. So you'll be completely offline and then you will be running completely on the Lacha Mesh network. So uh, the mobile app that it's open source too, you, you will be able to see that communications, that like the messages that, are being sent to the device and from the device to others inside the mesh and um, is completely encrypted on the phone. So, so it's really it, not trackable. This is what you're saying. It's not trackable in any shape you, or form. You can, you, you could track the information or who is sending it, but you don't know who it is because okay. it's so done. It, it might be associated to a, a random ID, for example, to like, mm -hmm. like a Bitcoin address, which is random, but you don't know who is behind it because if you download the app from the device itself, there is no IP address uh, on the internet or SIM card connected to that ID. So there, there is nothing that can connect you to the app that is being used. So it could be licensed by the authorities because radio is open and, and, and you can see um, packets going around. It's like if you start listening, uh, you can see, you can like, get information, but it's going to be completely encrypted. So you, you, you won't be able to tell 
who is talking to and what they are saying, but you will be able to tell that there are two entities or more entities talking. So you will be able to see like, uh, like if, if you are like internet ISP, for example, you can tell that someone is using your service to send this packet that has this amount of, of, of kilobyte, for example, but you don't know what is inside of it. Well, an ISP does have more information for you. So they have your MAC address, they know your address, your physical address, because they are serving you with the internet. And, mm -hmm. then, and they will probably have your ID. But in our situation, you have a hardware that does nothing that is not connected to your ID. And if you don't want to buy it from us, uh, you will be able to build it yourself. Okay, uh, let me let me ask you. Here. This is really important. Uh, you know, I'm uh, I'm not technical, so um, for my listeners to understand. Um, so uh, first of all, would it be possible to find out the? Uh, okay, you cannot find out like who it is. Like you just know there's just two entities communicating with one, one another. But could it? Is it possible to find out the approximate location of those entities, for example, that are communicating? Well, well the mesh as it has some limitation on the distance that it can reach, it needs to go over hops from one device to another to get to the final destination. So um, you won't be able to, if you see a package, you will be able to tell, I don't know, it has some hops on it, like it has jumps on distances, but you don't know what distance is here because one hop could be one kilometer, but it also could be like 70 kilometers distance because one of the hubs could be an stationary antenna that it that reaches very long distances, right? So um, in, it's very difficult to tell if you only have the, the encrypted information where it comes from. Um, but the, what, the, what could happen, and it has been done in the past, is that you could have like this van that the police has with a lot of antenna listening everywhere. And if they find uh, um, a radio communication that they want to track, try to track down, they start listening in that direction. And depending on the um, amount of information that is being sent in that specific um, frame or, or, or band, you will be able to tell if it's coming, I don't know, from north or from south, or you start okay. moving closer and other stuff. Gotcha. But that's what, that's, that's why our nodes are mobile, so you can carry them around. So that even if, they, if you have someone behind you listening to you and say, okay, this person is transmitting information that it's encrypted over this uh, band on, on, on radio, um, I will start to, to get close to him in all, uh, uh, as um, it has been claimed or allegedly um, trapped down uh, Pablo Escobar, for example, so they were listening to the to the community, the, the mm -hmm. mobile radio communication he was uh, keeping with his family, right? So, but, but it's it's only because he was always in the same place. So it, it um, <laughs> and and they were like they they had some ideas of where he actually was. So, but the thing is that it's currently difficult to listen to all uh, radio spectrum. And, and more if you are moving around, right? Right. Uh, okay, I have a, a couple of questions uh, my, uh, in my, the back of my brain. Um, first of all, when you say uh, if you don't want to, you know, get yourself the app, your, I mean, if you don't want to buy it, you can put, put it yourself together. Do you mean, I mean, it's not, you're not talking about the regular user. You're like more the technical savvy, like the more technical knowledgeable that can put it together for themselves like how how easy or difficult would that be or you know or could they just follow instructions and put it together the, you know yeah we, we have the all the options because they're the the idea that uh the large mesh needs nodes a mesh needs nodes in order to be uh capable of delivering messages so for its own reliance uh, resiliency it does need to have several nodes because if one node goes down, it still can find a path um, through another way, right? So the, the thing is that we are thinking not uh, from, the, from the early days, we, all, we not only thought about Bitcoin transactions. So this is not only a mesh for Bitcoin transactions because that's a very small niche of users. So we thought about what is more common, which is communications. So we want people to be able to trade, to continue uh, communicating with each other. For example, uh, 
the entire economy and commerce in Venezuela and even the government itself and the opposition and everything happens on WhatsApp. So what happened with WhatsApp is down. The entire country collapsed. So you, you don't have anyone bringing stuff in, in, in a truck from the coast to the center of the city. No one is capable of making promises of other, of paying use. Like I have to uh, 100 bill here with me. I want you to bring that truck to here so I can pay you. All stuff happened in WhatsApp, right? So if, if there is no internet or there is no electricity at all, which has happened more regularly in the past year in Venezuela, and it's going to happen in many countries. So uh, from now on, um, what, what will happen with the entire economy, with the whole country? People will starve, most probably, because they cannot pay for the food and they cannot bring the food either. So the, the, that's what the, the, the common use. So the, the Locha Mesh will let you communicate encrypted pri privately and securely with others anywhere in the world where there is possible to get you the message delivered over the mesh or even over the uh, blockchain satellite, for example. If, if you get one message over the blockchain satellite to a place like Venezuela that is completely blackout without electricity at all, that don't have internet either, you will be able to deliver the message to the mesh, even if it's an isolated city. So that's, that's the common use, and, and that's how we think that most, more regular people will use it for chat, and, and group chat, uh, sending a, a short uh, voice recording and things like that, and we'll be able to trade and stuff, and also pay with Bitcoin. But it's, it's like, in, in that situation, we do need to have the app on the, App Store and the Google Play Store, and we we'll be able, you know, and we do need to sell the devices because most people don't know how to do all these things. Exactly, but we it's, are. Yeah, think, it's got to be user friendly. It. Yeah, it's got to be user friendly. Yeah. This, this is the most important. User experience, user interface, and you know, intuitive handling. I mean, it's for the regular user. It's for the needs of the people. So let me ask you before I forget these questions. Uh, first of all. Um, I mean, uh, am I correct, right? First of all, from data volume, like from the data capacity, it, it, first of all, it doesn't take up much data, like for transferring or whatever storage or data. So uh, the data and the, the, the energy source, uh, because you see a battery, so it's not really, you could actually even work with a solar panel, a solar cell, right? It doesn't take much energy, right? Yeah, we, we thought about, uh, the uh, the competition right now, it's like people who are trying to do mesh are doing it wrong. That's why we are doing our own. And those who tried to do it in the past did it wrong. So you, you have, if you try to look for some working mesh, you, you won't be able to find any because most of them failed in the past and they are failing right now. But the, the only ones that are trying to do something that is feasible and that works, that is worse, is us and, and our competitors. And, in, 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 and they have a very limited hardware. So those uh, the people, this, uh, the, the mesh try to decide, the mesh developer who are trying to make mesh out of nowhere, they are trying to decide, should we use mobile phone? Because there are a lot of them. And then there, there, then there are us that we won't be able to use mobile phone because mobile phone are not meant to be mesh networks, devices. So we are making our own hardware, which is capable of running for several hours, like 40 hours, um, uh, always on, doing relay of messages, running only on battery. And even if, if, if you need it, you can run on solar power or a phone that basically runs on, out of battery in six hours. So it's, it's, it's not feasible to do it that way. So we are doing our own device, which, uh, which has a very low, uh, battery consumption and it, it, it does has a really actually working antenna that can give you uh, kilometers long distances for communications that um, use sub gigahertz um, radio bands so this is like a, a specific device that is meant to work for what it's being uh, made right so this is more like a hotspot so it's like you, you buy a hotspot and you don't play uh, with it, you, you don't play a Call of Duty with it. Like, like your phone, your phone is used to play, is used for a camera, is used for everything. It's a specific device, it's like the router in your house, right? So that's why, why we are doing it this way. And in bandwidth, we have 10 times the amount of bandwidth of our 
only competitor. So it is in that we, we, we are capable of not only sending short messages and short audio recording or voice recording, we are also capable of sending information like the lattice uh, Bitcoin blockchain data um, that's over the mesh. So we are capable of sending this amount of data. We are also capable of like downloading small websites or websites that are sensors through the system or blogs, things that can be loaded uh, like in a very slow internet connection. Like and right now in Venezuela, people work with like 66 kilobytes per second or something like that. And we are capable of doing 10 times that. So uh, it's uh, like 500 kilobits per second is, is like the ter theoretically our max uh, bandwidth. So for that, for, for that amount, you can even like, not only send a, a Bitcoin mempool, so you, are, you can tell if your transaction uh, has been actually added to a mempool and then to the Bitcoin blockchain. So you can also sync your Bitcoin full node over the mesh without using the internet. Wow, wow, wow. So before we talk about like the potential of Lightning Network on top of that, <laughs> Um, let me let me ask you what kind of uh, or in what developmental stage or phase are you guys? I mean, uh, so to have a realistic picture, like has this been tested? Are you guys in the testing phase? Do you still need more resources, investors? Or I mean, can I ask you that? Is is can you uh, talk openly about that? Yeah, we the the company which is Lacha Inc. that developed the devices for the Lacha Mesh is currently at the stage of. Uh, prototyping the second version of our prototype which is this one that can do this amount of, of bandwidth and, and we are uh, designing our own board we are currently looking for investors and, and also uh, invest uh, investment or or donations to be able to also continue maintaining and advancing the open source software and and the, the open source part of the project. Right? I mean, this is so such a the, fantastic project. I'm really calling upon all, I mean, angel, venture, venture capital, angel capitalists, venture capitalists, entrepreneurs with real ethical, you know, motives and, and, and intentions with, you know, if they have investment money. Uh, this is one of the, I mean, one of the most uh, amazing and, and exciting projects we've ever heard of because it really, it's not like some utopian project. It, it seems like you guys are really, you just need, you know, maybe a trial and error phase still test it out and build the infrastructure, right? Like build the network structure. Is am I correct? Like, yeah, we, we are close to getting to that, to that. We are currently final finalizing the first the uh, revisions of our own board design that we will let us get a finished like development kit that will let us uh, like uh, develop or, or advance the code quicker. So we are also capable not, of not only continue making the software that will go, to, uh, that, that will run on the devices themselves, but it's also go to uh, testing. So it's like testing the, the, the battery life, testing the distances, testing the amount of data that we can send, testing it on, uh, at, at the street level, testing it on, on building level. So all, all these things that we, we do need uh, to, to see what is feasible, what's not, we are currently um, in, in that phase. So we, we need to finish the development kit that is going to be like, the, like a, uh, a release candidate device. So the one that we can actually send to production if we need, but it's also going to be the one that we're going to use for testing. We are currently in that phase. Um, the, the open source uh, software that runs on the devices and also the open source software um, that is the chat app that, that we are developing for mobile phones is on GitHub. So, so if, you, if you have people interested in helping us also on that part, it's um, completely open for everyone, anyone to, to contribute to there and donate to the open source uh, project too, but it's also uh, possible to donate or invest that, that we have that possibility of getting investment uh, into the Locha Inc. app, that it's the one that is going to sell the EC to use plug and play devices. How much would that be? Like, uh, first of all, let me ask you, uh, what what would be the time map? Like time, you know, from, from just from your perspective, what would be the roadmap? Uh, 
like you know how long would that take if you had all the resources and you have you know you have your team you have everything you you would need time to test everything out you know what what's the roadmap well if if we do find enough funding we kind of start doing the testing and then going to production in less than six months so wow. it's like wow. around three or six months but at the current pace that we are with the current investor that we have and the funds that we currently have for the company that it's also paying for the open source part of it it's going to take a little bit more time so it for the two prototypes that we have been developing it has take us one year right now mm -hmm. uh yesterday it was one year exactly so uh, so for the first and second prototype it has took us this time because we've been running with very low resources but right now we we are we we do have people interested on in helping us but we also need funds in order to be able to get to a production ready device or, or a testing ready device too that we can start sending the development kits to developers send the send development kits for example to uh, the hardware full notes company who would like to integrate our mo radio models so they full nodes not only uh, provide users with a, a Bitcoin full node that they can control themselves, but that can also operate without internet and without exposing their users to their ISP and their government, but instead use their large mesh for connecting to other Bitcoin nodes and share the mempool and get to miners without using the internet. This is fantastic. This is so exciting. Let me ask you, um, wh what would be, uh, I mean, is that a, like a substantial funding resources you guys need or is that like a minimal? Uh, first of all, I want to say this is music in my ears when you say open source, you know, all the time. It's, it's, this is so great that it's open source. You know, it's not like patented or, you know, like intellectual propriety bullshit, you know. So it's a really like, a, you know, like a fuck you technology. It's, it's beautiful. So can you... Um, uh, can you, I mean, can you talk about like how much would you guys need? I mean, uh, and, and what, are, what would be also the technical challenges from your, from your perspective, right? Or from your, you know, from in this phase? Well, the, the difficult part is finding the people who knows a lot about it, about this and for them to be available. So the people we, we've, we've been working on are very good people who knows a lot, but for some kind of tenses, like some of them, for example, were um, uh, fleeing their country and things like that, so they don't have a job uh, in the place the way they where they just arrived, so they are working with us. But like the, with the amount of experience that they have, they most probably will be hired by a very big company and do satellite stuff or radio stuff or or a mobile company or mobile phone company, things like that. So that's that's the, the most difficult part to get. The people who know about this and who will um, and also would like to work on this if they are available to do it so um, for for that we for example need to be able to pay them enough for to retain them into this project because not only uh, the idea of the large mesh will keep them with us they also need to pay for their families and they need to of do course. other things so we also need to be able to pay them enough for them to be happy um, on doing the thing that they also want to do. It's, it's not only they want to do, but they also like capable of doing it because they are making enough money. Uh, but the, the, the project itself, we, we think that we will need like one or two uh, years uh, run money. We will need enough money to be able to put two years full time onto this, but also for, for this kind of, um, to be able to hire people who he's, and experience enough to help us advance at the pace that we want. So this is the kind of difficulties that we are finding in the hardware design that we believe should be completely uh, open hardware too, but as it's currently being paid by uh, investors, we think that we need to give them the opportunity of making uh, a re revenue out of the hardware they are paying for. So we, we are not only going to make the device that we're going to sell, but we are also going to make the guides to make it completely open hardware so you can build your own. And we are also doing all this effort with the same funds. So it's like we are from, uh, uh, 
making a promise to our investor that they are going to have a device that is going to be in the market and going to be sold so they can make enough out of it, profit or, or whatever. Yeah. But we are, we're, our main idea for a year ago was and still is to make it completely open hardware. So it is like a standard that everyone would like to build on. Right. Um, this is so fantastic. I mean, it's so, so exciting. I mean, I, I already see this because, you know, I mean, I talk, of course, you know, about Iran because, you know, it's, uh, you know, I don't have any connection with Iran, but still I have partially some family, but it's about, you know, with a Venezuela or Hong Kong, this is just the tip of the iceberg we've seen with the, whatever protests, riots, uh, uprising, whatever you want to call them. And this is, this is just, I think this, the beginning of a, you know, of a series of a chain reaction of, of, of protests and, and people, you know, revolting and, 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 and raising their voice. And, and, you know, I mean, this is a real fight against, uh, whatever oppression, repression, surveillance, uh, you know, uh, Orwellian, uh, nightmares. Um, let me go back to the technical. Um, so like in Iran, Zio told me like many, a lot of people in Iran are using VPN. <laughs> Whether how effective that is, I don't know. But uh, so they, uh, the regime or the government is already thinking of whitelisting, like you know, internet uh, for people, you know, who either I don't know, loyal or, or close to the government, or you know, really like really restricted. And and he hopes that this is not going through, because that would be a really nightmare whitelisting, you know, uh, internet connections. Uh, would my question is, would a VPN be with your you know, with the technology you're developing, uh, be obsolete then? Uh, I mean, would or is it still useful to, is, you know, still have that implemented, the VPN? Well, the, a VPN service, just like the App Store or Google Play Store, is still run by someone. So it's a point of failure. In that, in, in that case, for example, if they want to blacklist it or whitelist, it's possible. So it's like, uh, for example, VPNs are completely banned from Venezuela, so almost no one can use them. Uh, not only because the government blocks them, but also because ser uh, uh, VPN services are not allowed to operate in Venezuela because of blockade from the U.S. So it's if it is still a point of fail, fail you, you, something that can be uh, many in the middle can be. It's like uh, well, the, it's basically like the regular internet. The, 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 the only difference is that your connection go through uh, an encrypted uh, communication system and then ends up going out somewhere. So that's basically what it, what it does. But it's, it's, it's a still a server that runs on top of the internet. And the internet is, is the one that is uh, overly controlled and it's very easy for them to shut down because oh, they okay. have all so the, it's all not, the, all okay. the mm -hmm. So it's not possible so to the, circumvent like the VPN restriction or, you know, is. It's well, the VPN still works over the internet. So if you block the internet, right. it's, you, you, don't, you don't have VPN right. services. <laughs> and the, the thing is that the Tor, for example, uh -huh. runs also over the internet, but they right. do have a way to tune out the information. So, so in, in China, for example, all, all the exit nodes are blocked. Um, but but you, you, uh, using the same technology, you are capable of setting up an exit node that is unknown to everyone but only you know about it. So you are able to connect over the channel to it directly and, and, uh, and like that's bridge, you know? So you can, you, you, you can get uh, to the regular internet over Tor, even if all the exit nodes are blocked because you have one that no one else knows about. So what the, what the Lodge Mesh is going to enable, for example, in the case, of, uh, well, um, for example, Venezuela also have a, huge blacklist of websites. So there are many websites that are not accessible from Venezuela. Um, there are many uh, VPN services that are not accessible either from inside because you are blocked or from outside because they cannot serve you. Um, and, and, and the thing is that we, what we think we can do is that we can put stationary antennas on the border of the country, like in Colombia and Brazil which this stationary antenna that will have uh, enough power to um, ir irradiate information inside the country, but also to get hubs, uh, through hubs, uh, information out of the country, you'll be able to uh, like circumvent this blockade. So it's going to, to be like a direct uh, connection 
from one isolated Lacha mesh network that is going through this, uh, this stationary antenna as a bridge to the internet or to other Lacha mesh networks, like for example, in Kukuta or in Colombia, or if you want to get, get two different separately or isolated mesh network connected, you will put one of these bridges in the middle and you'll be able to circumvent everything else. So wow. the thing is that your communication won't go through the internet. So it's, it, it's, it won't be possible for them to block it because the mesh itself is resilient to censorship. So if you get one node like down, because for example, you disconnect this entire city because you don't want it to continue emitting information or, or sending information over the mesh, you will be able to find another path in another city or in another node. Wow, you guys thought of everything. Let me ask you, so if, you, if you're talking about like stationary antennas at the border or on the borders or, you know, somewhere around the borders of, of the specific country, whether it's Venezuela, Iran, would it be possible for, you know, the military, whoever, the regime to like to scramble, like, uh, or would they shoot themselves into the foot because they're using, you know, they would, could they just, you know, Mac, do a collective like scrambling I don't know. I'm just I'm just um, asking to you know have a bigger you know a broader understanding. Like, is yeah. it possible to scramble it? Yeah, you, you you can get like noise in the middle, and you can start like uh, like uh, blocking the information, right? So you, you can use the channels uh, and spam them, and and in that way you will be able to silence one of the. Uh, like the remitter and the recipient, so you won't be able to listen to anything. So, but you can do that like for that much time. You won't be able to do it like 100% of the time for 365 days a year. And even right. if you do it and the information don't get through, you will always find a path, an alternative path to deliver the message. Because once the message don't get through and you never get the ACK or, or the feedback that it has been delivered and read, you will be you will be able to to try other paths to get to it. Even if you have to like go all over the border and doing hops to get inside the country, you will be able to do it. Right. Uh, this is yeah. This is this is this is uh, really important to understand. Let me ask you, um, what would be what would you say is your technology? Just you know, for for, for deeper understanding. How different is it from the technology that Blockstream, you know, have have done with satellite again, you know, with all these setups, these highly sophisticated setups? What what is like the essential difference, like how from you know the approach to this technology? I mean, or the communication, the broadcasting? Well, yeah, they, they are not uh, like there are different approaches of doing different things. So it's the thing is that. Uh, in this situation where you, we are being like blocked in Cúcuta and we are not capable of sending information from Cúcuta to San Cristóbal inside in Venezuela, for example, because they are making, uh, they, they are trying to scramble the communication or, or, or targeting our antennas directly. So we are not capable of, of emitting information uh, directly inside the country. Uh, what, what we could do because we are outside, for example, we want these messages to get through. We want these messages to get to Venezuela. I don't know, what, one very important message that we need to get to Venezuela, by Bitcoin, for example. And we send this information over the internet or directly over the mesh uh, to the Blockstream API, and we get this message on the satellite. And this information that is on the satellite is now being down to the country directly in Venezuela. And someone there has a computer that is listening to the uh, Blockstream satellite, and it's capable of getting the message and then sharing it inside the mesh, which is isolated inside the country. So the message gets through. So that's one of, one of the, 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 the ways to, to get the message, either uh, like beaming information directly from the border or from the space itself. So that's, the, um, that's what, uh, in this case, is a way to circumvent this kind of blockades that they are going to try to in, uh, impose in, in these radio communications. And the, the other, uh, like Nick Sapo and, mm -hmm. uh, and Grubles, and I, and I don't remember the name of the, of the, of the person, they sent a message. Uh, I think Rodolfo Novak also did it. They sent an uh, offline beacon transaction from Canada to the US 
over radio using ham radio. The thing is that ham radio needs you to have a license and the, the, the information can get very uh, long in the distance, but the information has to be very small. So it's, the bandwidth is very small. Um, so what we do is that we have better bandwidth, but the information doesn't have to get that far because it only needs to reach another node in order to find a path doing hops over nodes. So in, in that, we, we, and we use a band a radio that is free to use, which is, um, um, and the information can be encrypted over that uh, band with which a uh, hand radio can, cannot do it. So the, the, the ones that you have to be um, unencrypted information. Um, and and hand radio operators, for example, in, in California have just received uh, an order from, from the government to shut down their operation and dismantle the antennas because they have a license so you know where they are located and you know where they are living, in which case uh, it's not possible with the large mesh devices because you either buy them from us or build it yourself so no one knows uh, where you are transmitting from. Oh, this is great. Um, I, I, I don't know whether it was a presentation or article I read or a presentation I, I, I saw some, a long time ago. Um, let me ask you a very, you know, trivial, I don't know, very layman question. There's specific, uh, seems to be specific radio frequency radio signals that just bounce up and down or off, you know, into the atmosphere stratosphere. And that's why it's so hot, it's so difficult to to censor it, you know, to track it down, to scramble it. Is that true? Like, uh, do you know what I'm going with this question? Are there like specific well, I, radio frequencies? No, I, I do know about this long distances radio that do bounce on, on the earth. Mm -hmm. But this, these are, these are basically the traditional radio that is used for communications, like kilometers long communication. But those are not the ones that, that we are using. But it would also depend on the antenna and the, and the power you are using to, to transmit that. Uh, this kind of question is more for Luis, who is the CTO of the company. Mm -hmm. And he for sure can answer back that. And he can tell you why we are not using it. But the things that uh, it, it does need, like huge antenna with a lot of power to do that. But it's, it's good because you will be able to connect the US with Europe, for example. Or, or this type of communication without having to go through a gateway over the internet, which is basically a huge cable that goes under the, the ocean, right? Right. Mm -hmm. Wow, this is so exciting. Let me, okay, let me uh, summarize it for myself. So it's a, tech, so you guys are working on a, a you've been working for it. How long have you been working on this? Uh, when did you start? Almost two years now. Okay, so two Almost years two. ago, wow. So you started off uh, working on this, uh, I just want to call it local mesh network technology, which is open sourced. And from the objective or, you know, the, the goal is to, you know, have a censorship resistant, you know, private, open, decentralized uh, communication and broadcasting uh, technology mm -hmm. platform, right? Yeah. To yeah, communicate and to broadcast. <laughs> Yeah, we, we call it Locha Mesh, which is mm -hmm. L-O-C-H-A Mesh. Mm -hmm. and, and this, uh, the protocol is open source. The firmware that runs on the devices is open source. The app that is going to be the first app that runs on the Locha Mesh is also open source and runs on Android and iPhone devices. Um, and it's also like, it, it can also be used like from a computer or from a Raspberry Pi or Rock64. So you, you'll be able to connect your, your like, I don't know, it's like Bitcoin full node, or if you have a web server or, or, or if you have your lightning, net, lightning node there or Electron server running in a, a computer, you'll be able to connect to it directly over the Locha mesh from your phone directly to it. So you will be able to sync this your fantastic. mobile, fantastic. mobile so, wallet. Or so. Yeah. So Randy, so that would mean the, you know, the, the, uh, you know, this, this, um, this repetitive, uh, reminder that, you know, run your own node, run your own full node becomes even more important in this case, right? Yeah. Because you, you, when you use your full node, you are still, have, you are still using the internet. So the ISP know that you are using the node 
And I, there are some people who runs their nodes with Tor services, which is what they should be doing. But in that situation, the ISP and the government knows that you are using Tor. They just don't know you are using, that you have like a Bitcoin node uh, behind it, but they do know you are using Tor. But when you are using the mesh, the mesh is, is uh, the, the Locha mesh basically lets you connect directly to your node just like you are sending a message i'm receiving a message to one of your friends for example and no one would be able to tell even if they are in the middle they will be able to i don't know it's like okay this uh, i'm going to set up this node here so i can uh, get in the middle of the communication of these two people or, or this node and this uh, owner of the node but what what he can do is like uh, censor you so you won't receive the messages but the things that are our device will tell the, the Locha mesh node will tell that it's being censored. So he will just stop using that path and try to find another one. And that is on like a continuous basis. It, it constantly changes the, the, the panel, uh, the path, the, ch I don't know, the channel or the frequency, or whatever you want to call yeah, it. it. Well, the, the thing is it, you, you draw, you draw like a map of possible uh, ways to get to the destination. It, it, and, and the thing is that you end up getting an ACK or a feedback that that's a good way to do it because it has less hops than the others, but you keep uh, uh, the other alternative. So you say if one, you, you, you use this one and you are capable of, of telling that you are sending messages and you're getting replies, but you stop getting replies, you just try another one. Even if it's going to take you a few more seconds to get there, you know that you can still try that one. This is really exciting. So we are already at the end of our. Uh, I don't want to, you know, uh, go over one hour. We could, but uh, I, I want to. There's a lot of information, a lot of precious information, knowledge, and, and really to uh, un comprehension uh, to to digest uh, for my listeners. This is so fantastic. I'm really excited because uh, I mean, just just you know. I imagine once this, you know, starts rocking, I mean, th we're talking about like communication broadcasting possibilities without independently from the internet. So you can do finally with the hardest and scarcest money ever created, Bitcoin, you can start not only hodling, but finally, you know, using it as a medium of exchange and there will be you know this 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 moment this critical juncture or tipping point whatever you want to call it critical adoption rate point will come in all these countries venezuela you, you, iran hong kong whatever that is and they will be like totally free and independent and you will be able to use the bitcoin that you have without having to expose your uh, your funds or your, your addresses over your internet connection in your house or your phone that is connected to your ID because you've been face scanned in order to buy the SIM card or, or they have the, the, everything with, uh, about you. So when you send Bitcoin using your mobile phone uh, data network or you, or you send from your house, you are basically exposing all your funds or, or, your, or your Bitcoin addresses. But if you do it over the mesh, you, you can simply sign a Bitcoin transaction offline and, and then broadcast it over the mesh and someone picks it up and connect over the mesh just two to one other node and one to other node and then it gets to a miner directly and this miner in the mesh get this uh, raw Bitcoin transaction and add it to the uh, block that he is just creating and then it gets uh, transmitted to all the Bitcoin network. It gets confirmed and you've made a completely offline means that you are outside the internet bitcoin transaction that no one could tell that it was you and it's this and it's now it is that the bitcoin full nodes and the miners and the users are all when when all they all are will be running inside the mesh itself they won't have to go to the internet which is the one that can be censored which is the one can be uh, trackable the, the one that you can be exposed to the 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 the, the oppressive authorities in the situation will be able to have like 
the 10,000 Bitcoin nodes that is going to be exist, connect to each other, talk to each other, and even send messages because now there, there are people uh, uh, creating messages inside the Lightning Network too. So we'll be able to set to do all stuff, but in this alternative uh, censorship resistant, private, and um, secure communication system, which is the Lodge Mesh. This is so exciting. Okay, um, I want to do a you know a, a really a series of, of 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 talks and interviews, you know, special episodes exactly on uh, you know on this on this uh, really evolutionary, uh, you know, liberating technology with you guys um, in the you know in the t t time to come, next weeks, months, whatever. Like going more and more specific and really help. I really want to help you. Uh, really, this this project. Uh, you know your company your project should be definitely in any angel of venture capitalists out there uh, you know if you guys can donate to the project just do this Lodge mesh uh, what's the website Lodge mesh uh, dot io and you can find them on on twitter.com slash Lodge underscore io and Randy is on on Twitter too with his Twitter, Twitter handle Twitter dot uh, it's Randy Brito. Uh, so, so I'm going to put this all the show notes. So, uh, Randy, so thank you so much. This is so exciting. Uh, I, I wanted to go also a little bit into that because I, you know, I, I'm not technical, so I want to really like have a subtopic on, um, on Lightning Network. Maybe it's maybe when the time is mature enough, or you know, when you guys are a little bit more further uh, on the roadmap, like talk about what what would the t Lightning Network technology would that inc you know increase even more you know the privacy aspect the censorship i mean could you like do a short comment on that or can we uh, can we talk about this like maybe some other time well it's going to work, it, it's going to be possible to run your lightning network node and get it sync over the blockchain server and also over the mesh and you'll be able to open channels directly uh, or inside the mesh just by making it uh, offline uh, transaction and get it into the Bitcoin, in, into the Bitcoin blockchain and getting a, a reply back that it has been created. So you are capable of making payment inside the Lightning Network without having to go to the Bitcoin blockchain every time. So it's, it's going to enable not only communications, Bitcoin transaction, but also a Lightning Network transaction, which after you've opened the payment channel, you'll be able to do all the payments inside the large mesh without having to go outside in time. So it's this is kind of the, the, the kind of thing that we are thinking about. And and thanks to the Lightning Network, we are also thinking on ways how to incentivize running the nodes. So if you have like a, a full node that is over all online and you add a radio model for our devices, you, your device we also do deliver or, or relay messages inside the mesh and you will be um, and we are thinking of ways to incentivize that so you get paid on inside the, uh, the, the Bitcoin Lightning Network um, for doing it. So in that way you, you'll be uh, incentivized to run it not only your Bitcoin node but also um, to be one of the nodes of the larger mesh. This is so exciting. This is fantastic, uh, Randy. So uh, you know what? What I would love really to do. I mean, I'm in Vienna. You're in, uh, you know, you, you know, Europe in, in Spain. So maybe we can sometime sit together and have a, um, you know, face to face talk. I want to, you know, record this even maybe on um, uh, with my professional equipment, um, and and have a really, you know, in depth. Uh, you know, I really want to. Want to help you guys? This, 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 this technology. I mean, it's, it, there are so uh, you know there are really few projects that I I'm really amazed at the at the rate of speed you know at the um, of, of how this this all this technology in the Bitcoin space or the you know and you know in general in the communication space is evolving uh, in connection with Bitcoin. So I'm really amazed. Um, so any final thoughts, Randy, before we wrap this up? Any you know final. Um, thoughts or, or information or where people can, uh, you know, find more resources or to look, to look you up. Are you guys on YouTube too, or whatever you have? Oh, uh, we, we, we are open to anyone who would like to, to contribute, to help, to code, to, uh, and to share their knowledge or experiences and, and all this information or, or all this technology. And we are completely open to that. We can, you can find a uh, lot the website. 
also uh, locha underscore io on Twitter. So if if you have any idea that we should be looking at, or or anyone that we should be talking to, feel free to send us a message or, or send us an email. Super. Uh, Randy, thank you so much. Uh, it was really, really enjoyed our talk, and 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 uh, you know I cannot you know applaud you enough. This is this is uh, this is really uh, more than inspirational, and 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 you know it it just makes me even more optimistic and more hopeful, and even more you know stronger in my conviction and trust that, that this, this 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 whole Bitcoin space and you know and it's about freedom in essence in its freedom. So. Uh, Thank you so much for what you guys are doing and and yeah and hope to you know get you back on whether you know live face to face or on a panel discussion maybe uh, with other you know, technologists engineers investors even so uh, yeah thank you so much again and hope to talk to you soon again thank you looking forward to it all right bye Randy thank you thank you very much thank you for your time thank you bye Randy. Uh, what you guys think? I, I'm really blasted away. It's so exciting. Uh, so, any anybody you out there, if you guys are angel capitalists, venture capitalists, or technologists, developers, coders, programmers, whatever you are, if you want to donate to this project, do this because this is this is like we're on the precipice of freedom, and um, yeah, um, I'm going to you know do a special series of episodes exactly on this because there's like millions and billions of people who will need this technology and it seems so like grasp like like so realistically graspable like like so reachable within you know within within reach uh it, it's not going to take years maybe it's going to take you know six months 12 months, whatever it takes but uh, by that time yeah we will we will finally you know have a you know, have make all these centrally controlled and criminal structures and entities, whether it be central banks, governments, regimes, all these uh, Orwellian nightmares, uh, make it finally obsolete. All right. So please like it, share it, follow me on Twitter. Uh, uh, Twitter handle is slash Kevin Devani. Uh, if you want to write me an email, please write me an email, send me your questions, your feedback, your inspirations uh, to kd at kvondavani.com or just simply hello at thetotalconnector.com. Um, write me a positive review if you can. That would support me a lot on any, you know, whatever Apple iTunes, any other podcast platform on YouTube. Um, so I'm going to put all this info on my show notes. And uh, yeah, let's celebrate freedom, total Bitcoin, total freedom. The total connector says